Good evening and welcome to Mary's Mantle Consecration. This is our first, um, it's actually our pre-evening. Tomorrow starts our first day and um, our first virtue will be on Thanksgiving. But for those who do not have a book, there is a page before that which starts with a prayer to Our Lady, um, asking for her blessing and offering these next 46 days to her, um, seeking to imitate her through the virtues and the gifts of the Holy Spirit that will be given for us to consider, and also through the meditations that we have on the Rosary themselves. So let us begin with this prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Most Holy Mother, whom I love tenderly as my own, in your sacred presence I offer to you these days of preparation for consecration in honor of the stars that adorn your heavenly mantle. I appeal to you to intercede these 46 days for all of my needs, for those of my beloved ones, and for any intentions you may want to bring up. Please show me the sweet compassion that you showered upon St. Juan Diego, your messenger. Please give me a pure and virtuous heart like your own, so that I might derive the same consolation, the soothing of my pains, and the lifting of my soul that Juan Diego received from the gentle words you gave him centuries ago. Listen, put it into your heart, my dearest one, that the living, that the things that disturb you, the things that afflict you, is nothing. Do not let your countenance, your heart, be disturbed. Do not fear any sickness, nor anything that is sharp or hurtful, Am I not here, I who am your mother? Are you not under my shadow and protection? Am I not the source of your joy? Are you not in the hallow of my mantle, in the crossing of my arms? Do you need anything more? So to begin, I'm going to dive right into reading our first meditation. And we call each meditation a star. Um, so this will be our first star, which is Thanksgiving. Let us begin this Mary's Mantle Consecration preparation with prayer. Mold my heart, Lord Jesus, and awaken my soul to the dreams of mankind from the beginning of time. In your eyes shine the hopes of centuries, the laughter of small children, and the brilliant sea of galaxies. Renew in me, Holy Spirit, the forces of divine winds. You who color the world with beauty, dazzle the eye with wonder, and dance through every lullaby, breathe in me. Father of tenderness, make my voice a note in your symphony, my movements a part of your dance, my thoughts a blueprint of your mind. Holy Trinity, fill me with your insatiable desire to capture souls. Take me to your lost and your poor, and with outstretched arms and conforming tears, exchange my heart for yours. Expanding fire, incomprehensible light, joy beyond ecstasy. My whole being is filled with thanksgiving, for you brought me into life from a single thought of love. You created me so small and insignificant to give me heights above the angels. I came from nothing and offered you so little, yet your reward for me is a place beyond dreams, a luminous dwelling in the land of unending peace. I have to say, when I first read this today, 
It almost escaped me how absolutely beautiful these words are. I think I was truly looking for just a reflection and most of this was a prayer. But I realized that this is the gift of Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving lifts us out of ourselves. It helps us to be able to sing. I think this is so beautiful. Um, you know, to have the shining hope of centuries, the laughter of small children, the brilliancy of galaxies, to become a note in the song of God, okay, to become part of the step of the dance. Our world is full of different trials right now, um, and, and, and really feel like they, these are more than ever in any century gone by. This seems to be a culmination. And yet, we can still conquer this evil by keeping our eyes fixed on Christ risen, um, knowing where the victory lies, knowing we need to share in the cross, but also recognizing that God is very much surrounding us. Um, Mary, you know, her first song that we have recorded in scripture is one where she compares the fact that there's all these different trials. He says, she says, he has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He's shown the strength of his arm. He scattered the proud in their conceit. He cast down the mighty from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. And, and sometimes we feel the strength of those who are proud, who are conceited, who are mighty, who take away and use their, take away our rights and our, our, our freedoms and, and, and leave us feeling um, the, the burden of their power. And, and yet Mary sees that when we truly so look at this through the mirror of God and time, that this doesn't have to hold us down. And, and so she was able to say, you know, he, he casts down the mighty from their thrones. He lifts up the lowly. He fills the hungry with good things. And the rich, they're sent away empty. And I think that really when we think about this with Mary, her focus was not on this world. Too often, this is where we get bogged down. And it allows us to then become just so overwhelmed by all the things that are going wrong. And, you know, there's many a saying that says, you know, it takes anyone can find the things that are wrong, but it takes a saint to find the things that are good. And, and that's our job. We're all called to be saints. So we have to continually look for those rays of light, um, of hope in our world, in our lives. And um, I, I don't know if you've ever heard this story, but when I was a postulant, I don't know if it's a true story or not, but I love the story. And um, the priest was telling us about a man who he was able to enjoy life because he realized everything was a gift. And he was a very poor man, um, but he had a horse. And um, he um, went into a town and he was, you know, begging for some sustenance and all the doors were locked and, and no one would let him in. And, you know, he went to the entire town and, okay, so he just took it as a gift of God to be able just to share in being completely dependent on him and having a little bit of maybe... Um, things that he was able to find in the woods that he went into. So he um, was able to actually get a fire started. He was so grateful for the fire and for the acorns that he found or whatever he was eating. But wouldn't you know it, there was um, all of a sudden someone coming by and they stole his horse. And so he had no means to travel after this, but he chose to bless God still. And, and then it started raining, and the little area of warmth that he had with the fire, it went out. But he continued to trust in God. And when he woke in the morning and went back to the town, here he found that there was almost no one living because these robbers and thieves and marauders had gone through the town. But because earlier thieves had taken his horse, and because 
the rain had put out the fire, he was completely spared. And, you know, sometimes it does look very, very bleak. And yet we have to trust that in the midst of all these things that look like they're going in the wrong direction, many times God is bringing out a greater good. And that act of trust that we can make and that willingness to rejoice is one of the greatest gifts that we can give to God. Um, I, when I was reading the book of Daniel, I just got so overwhelmed. I sing this psalm in our office so often, but I have not read it within the context of the book of Daniel. And it is a song of praise sung by the three young men who were thrown into the fiery furnace. And, you know, before they got thrown into the furnace, they were told to bow down and to worship idols. And they said no. And they said, then you're going to be thrown into fire. And they said, if the God whom we love and adore can save us, may he save us. But if he will not, still, we will adore him. And we refuse to nail down to these idols. And they're thrown into the furnace. And you hear them singing a song of praise and asking all creation to join in that song of praise. And I think, again, that idea of thanksgiving is so important for us. <clears throat> when I was in school and we were told to thank God, you know, for our health and for our eyes, I really never thought a whole bunch about it. Um, I mean, I tried to do it, but I don't know if my heart was completely there. But one night when I was a sister and I was taking care of one of our elderly sisters, I decided to sleep downstairs on our first floor because I wasn't able to bring her up the steps. So I was near the front door and at midnight, someone rang the doorbell. It was the cold, it was one of those damp um, fall nights going down into the 40s and it was just misting outside and I didn't open the door. Um, and I turned the light on and I saw there was a man who was homeless out there, which is very unusual in that area. and just because we had had people in the area who had been on drugs, it was very hard to know if you could open a door. And he was talking something about not having shoes or missing a bus and something about the porch. And I, all I could see as I looked at him was the sheets in the distance that I knew was open 24 seven. And I was telling him, you know, sir, I can't let you in, but there, there's a sheets right there, if you look, you know, in the other direction, and, you know, you could have a roof over your head. And I felt bad, and I called the police, hoping that maybe they could help him out, but I didn't get anyone there. So I went to bed, and in the morning, some of our sisters were coming over to that comment for Mass, and they saw him on the porch. He slipped, slept on the steps outside, and I was right on the other side of that wall sleeping in a bed with a roof, with a blanket, with the heat on. And I think that from that point forward in my life, I can wake up each morning and thank God for a roof over my head, for clothing, for eyesight, for warmth, for running water, for things that, you know, sometimes we say it, but we take it for granted. And I think that when we have this attitude, it just opens our heart to how many blessings we have. And it can expand our hearts and, and allow us then to rejoice the heart of Jesus because if any of us have done anything for someone and we just see them smile in gratitude, it makes it all worthwhile. And so let's do that for God. Let's thank him and open our hearts in appreciation for all the graces that he's blessed us with.